We tell ourselves the story of Apollo as a saga of courage. We talk about the men strapped to the top of a controlled explosion, the pioneers who stared into the void and blinked first at the stars. And that is the absolute truth, but it's only half the story. The other half is told in whispers of transistors and the quiet hum of colossal mainframes. It is the story of a symbiosis, a partnership forged not in steel and fire, but in circuits and code. A partnership without which the human hero would have been lost before he ever truly began. Consider the task. A journey across 384,400 kilometers, or 238,855 miles, of cold vacuum. We were aiming a tiny capsule at a moving target from a moving platform through an environment of unfathomable complexity and infinite variables. Trajectory calculations, gravitational influences, thrust vectoring, attitude control, power consumption, the list was endless. To put it simply, it was a problem too vast for human minds alone, a game of probabilities and physics that stretched far beyond the limits of pencil and paper. The simple act of rendezvous and docking with another spacecraft required simultaneous real-time computations that a man with a slide rule would have taken a full year to complete. We didn't have a year. We had a few fleeting minutes. This, then, was the paradox of the Apollo program. To push the absolute limits of human capability, we had to admit our limitations. We needed a partner. A silent, tireless, and, if the engineers had their way, infallible partner. We needed a computer. Not one, but two distinct types of electronic minds, each with a different role, both utterly indispensable. The first were the behemoths on the ground. The second was a tiny digital brain in the cockpit. Long before the first Saturn V stood on its launch pad, the mission was flown a thousand times in a digital universe. On the ground, the Mission Control Center in Houston was home to the real-time computer complex, a sprawling assembly of machines, most notably the mighty IBM 360 series. These weren't just calculators. They were the nervous system of the entire program. They processed data from tracking stations around the world, calculated flight paths in real time, and predicted every possible contingency. They were the mission's guardian angels, the ones who saw the storm coming long before the crew did. These ground-based behemoths were also our architects. They were used in the design, manufacture, and testing of every component, from the pressure vessels to the heat shields. They simulated spaceflight scenarios, allowing engineers to make mistakes without risking a single life. For instance, the re-entry of the Apollo Command Module was a harrowing event, a vehicle slamming into the atmosphere at speeds exceeding 40,200 kilometers per hour, or 25,000 miles per hour. Temperatures on the blunt heat shield would rise to over 2,760 degrees Celsius, or 5,000 degrees Fahrenheit. The computer ran these simulations virtually, testing the ablative material and the aerodynamic shape hundreds of times. This was where we learned what worked and what didn't. This was where we made our mistakes so the astronauts wouldn't have to. The computers were also our teachers. Astronauts trained for hundreds of hours in simulators. These weren't just static cockpits with blinking lights. They were real-time computational environments. They were designed to put trainees into convincing spaceflight situations, complete with simulated flight dynamics, 
visual cues, and even the sounds of rocket engines and thrusters firing. The computers within these simulators mimicked the onboard systems with such meticulous accuracy that by the time they launched, the crews had already flown the mission more times than they could count. They had practiced every maneuver, every system failure, and every emergency procedure a computer could model. But the real crucible was in flight. At the heart of the spacecraft was the Apollo Guidance Computer, or AGC. This was a marvel of engineering, a digital brain small enough to fit into a pilot's lap. It was the silent third crew member, responsible for navigation, guidance, and critical systems control. Its hardware was unlike anything that came before it. It used a unique form of core rope memory, where programs were physically woven into wires, making them immune to radiation or power surges. This was the most reliable part of the whole system. The AGC was no powerhouse by today's standards. It had just over 2,000 words of RAM and about 36,000 words of ROM a fraction of the power of a modern smartphone, yet it was the lifeline to the moon. Its interface, the Dusky, or Disky, was a simple two-line screen with a numeric keypad. It was crude, it was cumbersome, but it was the crew's direct line to the mind of the machine. And then came the moment that defined the partnership. July 20th, 1969. Apollo 11, the lunar module Eagle, was on its final perilous descent to the surface of the moon. Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin were in the cockpit, their eyes fixed on the numbers on the disky and the desolate boulder-strewn landscape below. The computer, processing a sudden deluge of data from the landing radar, began to signal a problem. The infamous 1202 and 1201 alarms started to blare. These were executive overflows. The computer was being asked to do too many tasks at once. Back in the sterile quiet of mission control, the room went cold. Abort? A young guidance officer, Steve Bales, and his team knew the code. They knew what the alarms meant. The computer was handling the problem. It was dropping the less critical tasks and prioritizing the vital landing functions. In a tense, iconic exchange, Bales' team provided the verdict. The legendary flight director, Gene Krantz, gave the final word. Go. The partnership held. Neil Armstrong, with his hand on the manual joystick, used the guidance data from the AGC to steer the Eagle away from the treacherous boulder field below. He flew it by feel, but he landed it by the numbers, a perfect synergy of human intuition and cold digital logic. When he called out Houston, Tranquility Base here, the Eagle has landed. It was the culmination of more than just a seven-year-long effort it was the culmination of a silent partnership between man and machine. The landing was a triumph, but the mission wasn't over. On the lunar surface, astronauts deployed seismic experiments and other scientific instruments. These sensors transmitted voluminous data back to Earth, a constant digital pulse from a silent world. Back in Houston, the information was fed into the computer complex, which helped classify moon rocks and interpret the raw data. We were not just bringing home samples, we were bringing home the digital soul of the mission. The Apollo program was about more than landing a man on the moon and bringing him back. It was about proving what was possible when we embraced our tools. The technological advances, the breakthroughs in computer science, and the rigorous discipline of software engineering that sprang from the Apollo program changed life on Earth forever. The miniaturization of the AGC's components 
the invention of integrated circuits, and the creation of sophisticated software, all of it laid the groundwork for the modern age of computing. The lessons learned about real-time systems, about man-machine interfaces, and about fault-tolerant computing are the foundational principles of today's technology, from the systems in our cars to the phones in our pockets. The knowledge gained from the computerized analysis of moon rocks helped us understand the cosmos, while the same data processing techniques were soon applied to medical diagnostics and earth resource management, revealing patterns in crop yields and underground water sources. Computers were no longer just calculating machines. They were partners. They were the key to the future, a key forged on earth and turned on the moon.